Hello and welcome back to The Road to Good Cooking, and this week I'm going to be doing some more canning, um, showing you a few more exercises that I do on my bed in the morning, and I also made a batch of breakfast sausage links, and I cooked them sous vide, and they were absolutely incredible. I can't wait to share this recipe with you, so let's get started. I got this recipe in inspiration from Eric over at Two Guys and a Cooler, and he is one of my favorite sausage making guys, and all all of his recipes are absolutely incredible. This grilled pineapple smoked sausage recipe is from Eric's Celebrate Sausage Series, Season 2, Episode 10. I will post the link in the description box. All right, I had to um, sous vide my sausage because we are not allowed to have smokers and barbecues in this old folks joint. So I just tried a different method and I checked it out with Eric before I did it and he totally agreed that it would work and um, he gave me the cooking temperatures which I cooked it at 145 degrees and for about 90 minutes. And the sausage was, not only was it off the hook, flavorful but it was tender it was juicy um i th there were spices in, that i've never thought about th using for making sausage and i could not imagine how it was going to taste all put together but i tell you what it was absolutely amazing and i this is my second time making it and i absolutely love it first time i made the the links a little bit bigger um, you know, for like dinner size, but this size, this time I made it a uh, breakfast sausage size because I can, you know, I ate most of them for breakfast last time. So I just made them smaller this time and that way I can get a whole bunch. <laughs> But yeah, they uh, turned out really good in the sous vide cooker. And as you can see, there's no moisture in the bag, which is a good thing because that means that my um, sausage links are very, very juicy. And they were, they absolutely were. The one thing that I did notice cooking it at 145 degrees for 90 minutes, it, it didn't completely cook them, which is okay because um, I you know, I finished cooking them on the stove when I make them for breakfast. So it was no big deal. But I would love to try these smoked. Eric said that the smoking process just really elevates the flavor. And I just, I can only imagine how good this recipe tastes. Now I tweaked mine just a little bit because there's a few ingredients that Eric used that I don't normally use, which is the MSG because it does weird things to my blood pressure. And I don't use, um, what was the other one in there? Oh, the nitrates, sodium nitrate for, or curing salt. And there was one other ingredient in there that I didn't use. But like I said, my, these turned out really good. And when you check out Eric's recipe, you'll see all the different stuff that he used in his. And it's, oh my God, the recipe is absolutely amazing. There was one other ingredient that I forgot to mention that Eric had on his recipe. And it was coconut rum. And I didn't have any in my bar, so I didn't use it. So I um, let my sausage links soak in the water bath for about 10 minutes just long enough to stop the cooking process and here I'm cutting out the ends of my cellulose casings and by the way I am hooked on using cellulose casings I don't think I've uh, used the natural hawk casings in a while since I've been using these but they make the perfect little breakfast sausages um, I have a different size where I can make the dinner size hot dog size and the, it's, they're just so easy to use and I'll put the link in the description box and look at that. It makes a perfect little sausage. It really does. And Eric's, <laughs> you, when you check out his recipe, you will be flabbergasted when you see all the stuff that, I mean, he puts so much detail and so much thought in all of his recipes, which makes it so intriguing to me. But when we started, when I started going back and forth, asking him different questions about this recipe, and he said, you know, oh yeah, this, this is a very challenging recipe. And... <laughs> He's right about that. It was super challenging, but I made it work. You know, I didn't have a lot of the um, spices that he used. I had most of them. Um, I just, like I told you before, I don't use MSG and I don't use curing salt. Um, but everything else I had in my uh, spice cabinet. And I could not imagine you putting all those flavors together and how they were going to turn out. But this is my second time making this recipe and it won't be my last. And I tell you what, the... 
the flavor profile for the sausage, for this sausage recipe, is off the chain. It really is. Eric, you outdid yourself on this recipe. I can't wait to watch season three to see what you have up your sleeve, friend. Insane. Oh, my God. Eric had, Eric's recipe is just jam-packed with great flavors. Uh, there was a couple of things that I didn't use in my recipe, simply because I have to you know, watch certain things that I eat because of the medication that I take for my blood pressure and for my heart and what have you. And um, so I don't use MSG. I don't use uh, curing salt. I've never liked using curing salt because I've seen too many, too many horror stories with people using curing salt incorrectly and too much of it. And Eric did a um, video that I was watching last night and I will put the link um, in the description box and those of you that are using curing salt you really should check it out because he was dropping some nuggets as far as how people are using curing salt incorrectly and that stuff can kill you if you don't use it right so and I think that's one of the reasons why when I started making sausage years ago I tried it a couple of times don't really care for it and when I was buying sausage I always looked for sausage especially when I I would always go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods and get um, sausage that didn't have the nitrates in it, which is what curing salt is, is nitrate. And um, so I've never cooked with, you know, I've never made my sausage with curing salt because if I cooked it low, I don't cook it low and slow. I made my sausage to grill and I would cook it right then and there, you know, at the correct temperature. So I wasn't too much worried about you know, bacteria developing in my sausage because I would cook it hot and fast. So, and that's the purpose of having curing salt so you could slow cook it in your smoker and not have to worry about the bacteria developing because you're cooking it at such a low and slow temperature. But definitely check out that recipe, I mean that uh, video that Eric, that I was watching last night and um, he has some great Oh my God, he has great information on that channel. I love his channel. And this um, recipe was quite challenging. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, after making it the first time, this will be my go-to from now on. I, I love the way that this, the flavor profile in this sausage. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I'm going to put these in the refrigerator after I get them all uncased here. And I'm going to leave them in the refrigerator for a couple of hours, uncovered, so they can dry out. And then I will put them in individual bags and um, store them according to my serving size. And I, I'll probably eat about three with my breakfast. So I'm going to store them in, um, in probably th packages of three. Oh, that one got a little wrinkle on it. <laughs> Well, let me see. Let me break this one open. Check that out. See, I knew they weren't all the way done. That's why I didn't want to taste them. But that's okay, because I'll finish cooking them when I cook them on the stove. No big deal. And we're done. I got my garbage bag here. Those are going to the trash can, along with my gloves. And I'm done with this part of the project. And here they are. All right, here's all my sausage links. I end up with nine packages, or actually seven packages with three in a pack, and then I have two packages with four in a pack. So, you know what? I'm safe. I'm good. I'm good. This is my breakfast sausage. Yeah, I'm going to use it for breakfast. <laughs> this is my olive oil bottle that I got from my sis Marie, my neighbor around the corner, and I just love it. <laughs> Isn't that cool? All right, I put a little bit in my pan because my sausage is kind of lean, and I need just a little bit of oil to get it started. And here are the three that I'm going to sample. Well, I've already sampled them, but I'm going to share them with you because you didn't get a, you didn't get a chance to sample it. And here they are, set up nice. I'm going to cook them real low. 
Oh, these smell, smell so good. And this is all I'm going to have for breakfast this morning. My sausage and a cup of coffee because I'm having um, a big lunch. I made some tacos over the weekend. So I will be having Taco Tuesday on Monday. <laughs> with some, probably with some of my pineapple too because I still have lots of pineapple. Alright, I'll be back in just a second when these are done. There is nothing better than the smell of sausage first thing in the morning. <laughs> and also today I'm going to be making some pineapple pepper jelly. And it's a new recipe that I've found and I'll share that with you later. And um, I'm excited about trying it because, you know, I have a lot of pineapple and I still have some uh, peppers left over from my jalapeno jelly project. So why not, you know, put it all to you. So I'm going to get some more canning in this week. And I don't know what I'm going to do the rest of the week. But I know that I'm canning today and editing some videos. And we already took our walk. Sophie and I had our walk this morning. I did my exercise and I'll go into uh, some of the exercises that I did this morning with you later. Okay? My sausage is done. Look at this. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And they browned up beautifully. One bite. Here, take a bite. <laughs> I sure bite. You can have it. The whole thing. Mmm. <laughs> oh. Hot. Mmm. Super good. Man. I can't wait to have these with some hash browns, an egg, some toast. Ooh. Oh my god, this is good. Mm. Take one. I <laughs> mm. one. Okay, let me go. I got a lot to do today. I'll check back in later when I'm having my tacos. And one thing about repurposing, I, I bought a whole pork shoulder, ground it up, sliced some for my hot pot cooks, and then the, the ones that I ground up, I made sausage out of them, made me some tacos, made me some enchiladas. I mean, I put it to good use. I just, just didn't cook it with one thing. I made a bunch of things with it. But I tell you, it's the way to go. Mmm. And I caught it on salt. It's like a $28 pork shoulder or pork butt, about seven and a half pounds, and I got it for $14, almost half price. So, you know, sometimes it pays to shop the sales. Ooh. Now, see, I should have let these cool out before I ate them, but no, I had to eat them right now. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. I got work to do. You'll notice Eric's uh, recipe is in grams and milliliters. And um, what I did a couple of years ago, I ordered me this little digital scale because I love looking at uh, channels and recipes from different countries. And a lot of the countries outside the U.S., you know, their recipes are in grams and kilograms and milliliters. And um, this little scale saves me from having to look up a conversion chart every time I want to check out a, a um, recipe. And as you can see here, it measures in grams, it measures in kilograms, it measures in pounds and ounces, it also measures in fluid ounces, and it measures in milliliters. So there's no guessing, there's no, you know, trying to figure out a conversion chart or having to look up a conversion chart, and it's just, it's, I tell you what, it saves you so much time. And yes, I'm a Charger fan, die hard all day long. Okay, I digress. But if you uh, want the information, um, the ordering information link will be in the description box below. 
And I'll post the uh, recipe for this grilled pineapple smoked sausage in the description box, along with that video I was telling you about where he's talking about um, the proper way to use the curing salt. And you see this caption here? He says, a tropical festival for your taste buds. He ain't lying about that because this sausage is off the charts delicious. I'm going to be working in the kitchen today and I don't want it heated up, but I had to get my chicken cooked. So I'm going to cook my chicken today, sous vide, and I have my sous vide warmer warming up. It's now 123 degrees. I want it to get to 165. And when it gets to 165 degrees, I'll be putting it in a vacuum seal bag and letting it go for, uh, I guess, about two hours or so. And then I'll finish it off in my grill pan, put some grill marks on it. So that's how I'm going to do it. And you remember the other day when I was doing my uh, canning my pineapple and I was keeping all those stems I told you I use that and the uh, juice for my marinade. This is my chicken. I've been marinating it overnight and you can see the pieces of the pineapple stem that I reserved and I have some pineapple juice in there as well as other all kinds of seasoning. So my chicken is going to be super super flavorful. Alrighty. So and after I get done with these um, pineapple stems, I'll be throwing them away because they, they have served their purpose well. All right, my water is just bubbling right along there. And it should be up to temperature in uh, shortly. Okay, my sous vide is up to 151 degrees. So when it gets to 100, actually I can put the chicken in there right now which I think I'm going to do because the timer won't start for the cook time until it reaches uh, the 165 so it's not going to hurt it if I start it in here right now and somebody asked me why I had the um, paper clip right there I'll show you why I use it to hold my bag in place, that way it won't be floating all over the place. So chicken's in there, and when my temperature reaches 165, the timer will start. Don't pay any attention to my light over there. Hey, <laughs> creators, this is what we do. We put our light where we need to put it. <laughs> all right, so every, everybody's in the hot tub. And here's my other project I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be making some garlic confit. And that's just another term for roasting garlic in oil. And uh, what I have here is two bowls. One bowl has hot water and the other bowl has cold water. And I put the garlic in the hot water, leave it in there for a couple of seconds, and then drop it in the ice cold water. And that helps the skin come off. Now normally I wear gloves when I'm doing this project because my hands are going to smell like garlic for days but I got plenty of lemon so no big deal and you see how easy that skin comes off of there it's just really 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 an easy way to do it check out the roasted garlic um, recipe that I did some years ago and I'll put the link in the I card above and that's just an another way of doing it and being as I'm going to be working in the kitchen all day and I don't want to heat it up with the oven being on I'm going to cook my entire meal 
um, sous vide. And then when my chicken is done, I'm going to take it out and then I will cook it, um, you know, probably put some grill marks on it using my grill pan. And that'll only take like five or ten, five minutes or so. And then my dinner will be ready. All right, my garlic is done. I got all the peels off. It only took me like 15 minutes or so. And my sous vide cooker finally came up to the temperature that I want it to of, of 165 degrees. And I had the timer set for three hours and 30 minutes. And from after I get my chicken cooked, I'm going to uh, let the garlic stay in there a little bit longer. And I'm going to bump the temperature up to 195. And that way I can finish cooking my, my garlic confit. And my, my garlic is going in. You see I have it in a vacuum seal bag full of olive oil. And that olive oil is going to be, oh my goodness, you're talking about some good garlic infused olive oil and I tell you what it's going to be good on everything I use it to saute my vegetables with um, anything that I want to impart a little garlic flavor to I use that garlic infused oil and it just makes everything just super delicious all right so everybody's resting nicely in the um, hot tub and I will go on to my next project now that everybody is in the hot tub and I put a spatula on top of my garlic and that'll keep the bag from floating because you don't want it to, you don't want the um, bag to get on the element right, right there because I'm going to make sure that that circulates like it's supposed to and circulate properly. So yeah, I jerry-rigged it. Hey, it works. <laughs> it's keeping everything away from the element, right? Oh, one of these days I'm going to buy some weights for this. I, I have some weights but they're out in the garage somewhere. And I use the, um, those weights are for my commercial sous vide, so they're much bigger than what I need. But I'll buy some small ones to fit this one. So, okay, well, let me get back to work. First bag of chicken is done, and as you can see, my chicken created its own chicken broth. Now when I put this chicken in the bag, it had no juice in it, and look what it created. Some natural chicken broth. And this chicken broth is going to be good in whatever I use it for, making some gravy, I put it in some greens, whatever recipe requires or calls for uh, chicken broth, I'll have it. And that's one reason why I like cooking uh, sous vide because basically your your food cooks in its own juice. It's not like you're cooking in a crock pot where you're gonna cook it, all the juices out. And I have my uh, grill pan heating up and I'm going to um, oil it, oil the pan as well as the lid. And as soon as it comes up to temperature, I will be adding my chicken to it. some more chicken so I got that in my grill pan some salted cabbage air fryer oh yes yeah, sweet potato fries gone and they smell fabulous mm -mm -mm. And I don't know about you, but when I have cabbage, I like to have some extra onions with it. And there, and for my dessert, it's my oranges that I canned on the 8th. So that's going to be my dessert for today. And I cut my chicken off the bone because I'm going to be work, eating and working at my desk. And I don't want to get my work all messed up. So I always cut my chicken off of the bone. And it just... So much easier. So much easier. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's why I cut it off the bone, because I know it's going to be crazy messy with that barbecue sauce on it. <laughs> Time to plate up and eat. All right. Lunch is served. It's about 1.30 and I'm just now eating. This is my main meal of the day, which is why it is so hearty. And there's everything. Here's my onions, my sweet potatoes. I made some creamy French dip right there. French dip dressing for my uh, baked potato, or for my sweet potato fries. My sauteed cabbage, which is so good. And my deboned chicken. That's a half a chicken breast one leg 
and one thigh, which I cut off the bone. All right, time for me to get back to work. In my office, and there's that's what I'm editing today. This video right here. Oh my god, this is so good. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let me get back to work. Delish. The key to doing all these exercises is to make sure that you do them correctly. And um, as seniors, we really need to worry about our, you know, our ability to be able to maintain our balance and to just move correctly. Because I, before I had my uh, knee surgery, being as I was favoring my other knee because Esther was acting so bad, and then I started walking funny, and that in itself just kind of sends everything out of whack you know your hips get out of whack and oh, it, it was just a mess but you know now that I'm back on doing what I'm supposed to be doing I feel so much better and you can't go wrong with this strap you know and it's not that expensive they're about 12 13 bucks I believe on Amazon and I'd say get you one and use it daily every single day one day I'll do these exercises and then the next day I'll do these exercises and they just feel so 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 good all right so let me get back to work I still have a lot to do today and um, actually I don't have a lot to do today let me see what I'm doing today is Saturday what do I have to do today is Saturday and yes I keep I keep a schedule because if I don't if I <laughs> if I don't stay organized and I'm a I'm a hot mess all right and this is what I have to do on today I'm gonna schedule this video that I'm working on right now and hopefully get that uploaded either late today or first thing uh, in the morning and Sophie has already had her shower this morning and I still have to vacuum my office in my living room and tomorrow is my relax my mind day and I'm also gonna soak my toes Okay, all right, so let me get back to work. The pineapple pepper jelly video did not make it to this video, so I'll put it in the next one. By the time I finished eating and sitting at working at the computer for about an hour, I got so sleepy because I was so full and content. Well, you know how that goes. But anyway, I hope you all had a have a great weekend. Thank you so much for stopping by. Be blessed. Stay focused. Please stay safe. And I'll see you again soon.